So I just start now. Nope. Hi everyone. How's it going? Welcome to our monthly FCI seminar series. I see everyone is starting to log on. So we'll give everyone just one minute and then we will start. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to the monthly seminar series. Today, we're really excited for um, our presentation that's going to be presented by our graduate student, Alex Stewart, who is part of our environmental exposure program. Uh, working with him today and moderating is Dr. Shanta Dar who is an associate professor and the assistant director for technology and innovation in um, Sylvester Comp um, in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. And so today they will be presenting on heavy metal exposure assessment using toenail clippings and firefighters. So this is evidence from our firefighter cancer initiative. Uh, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Alex and Dr. Dar. Thank you guys. All right, hi everyone. Um, uh, my name is Alex, and as mentioned, uh, <clears throat> accompanying me today is Dr. Shanta Dar. And I know that we have a really big title here on screen. Uh, so just to simplify it down a little, today Dr. Dar and I will be going over an analysis process that we've been using to study um, firefighter exposures to specific heavy metals, and many of which are known to be um, are known carcinogens. Um, and we'll, we actually use this process to analyze toenail collections for these toxic metals. And I'll be going over how we do that um, here shortly. So let's get going. Um, so I'll start off by giving a brief introduction to the Firefighter Cancer Initiative, also known as FCI. And I'll be going over some of the challenges firefighters face as a result of their occupation. Um, so F FCI is led by a, a multidisciplinary team of scientists, healthcare practitioners, and occupational health and safety experts. And since it's launched in 2015, these scientists have worked closely with firefighters on the development and implementation of various projects, including um, the annual cancer survey, educational and survivorship curriculums, environmental sampling programs, and many others. Um, these projects can result in the reduction and prevention of cancer within the firefighter community across the state of Florida. And FCI's main mission is making um, the firefighter, the fire service safer, safer, both in the short and the long term. So the primary goals of FCI are to, are for one, to better document and understand the excess burden of cancer among Florida firefighters, and to identify um, novel evidence-based methods for reducing risk. And in order to accomplish these goals, we really have to understand firefighters' ex exposures as, thir as thoroughly as possible. And to accomplish this, and we accomplish this through a combination of multiple disciplines and methods of analysis. Um, so since we're interested in understanding as much as we can about what firefighters are actually exposed to due to their occupation um, and during events, um, such as fire suppression, we're using multiple collaborative methods in order to examine possible exposures. Um, these include um, examining environmental data collected from wristbands worn by firefighters during fire calls, um, examining particle, particle concentrations present within the air in fire and disaster sites, analyzing used face mask respirator cartridges, which are worn in and around fires, um, analyzing blood samples, which are collected shortly after fire calls. And finally, the one that I have here in orange, which I'll be explaining today, is analyzing toenail samples, which are collected from firefighters and first responders, and then analyzed for the presence of um, various dangerous compounds. Um, so, so as you can see, there's a lot going on, and we're using a lot of multiple, we're, we're using multiple different methods 
um, to gain as much high quality information as we possibly can about what firefighters are actually exposed to. And now when you look at um, some of these photos of firefighters actually in action, like the one I have here, I think it's pretty easy for everyone to imagine that uh, they may be breathing in some pretty gnarly contaminants and to think that they may have been exposed to a lot of potentially dangerous things throughout the course of their, their career as a firefighter. And because we, we really feel the same way, a few of our studies under FCI actually follow firefighters over the long term in order to provide them with, uh, with biomonitoring surveillance. And this is so that we can track the levels of, of contaminants present, present in their body in the aftermath of things like fire calls. And we can track any um, potential negative health effects that may stem from that. Um, we provide a, a majority of this biomonitoring bio -monitoring surveillance through the collection and analysis of toenails. And I'll explain more, uh, more about that, exactly how we do that a little later in this presentation. Um, but, but before I go any further, I just want to take a little bit to, to talk about why we think this is so important. <clears throat> and it's because um, we know that occupational exposure as a firefighter tends to be accompanied by sig significant challenges for their overall health. Um, this, is due, this is due to working in areas full of dust, debris, smoke, soot, and many other nasty contaminants that you really don't want to be breathing in. And this exposure increases the risk for, you know, a litany of, of negative health effects, but these include pulmonary disease, cancers, asthma, PTSD, and, and many others. Um, so the, da the data we're gathering through these toenails is important right now so that we, we, can we can start to get an idea of exactly what these firefighters are exposed to, and we can start to understand how much of that stuff is actually making it, in making it into their bodies. And additionally, it'll be imp important in the future, as many of these negative health effects tends, tend to take years to develop. So it'll, be, so it'll be helpful to already have an understanding of each contaminant that is present in these fire sites both for informing uh, medical providers and for potential legality issues while trying to link the, these health outcomes that I just spoke of to directly to the fire calls and to the fire profession. Um, so a similar disaster, or uh, yeah, similar disaster I wanna go over and that we're taking a, a lot of guidance from is the response to the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in 9-11 in 2001. So here I'm showing some really interesting data from the 9-11 um, World Trade Center Health Program. And this is, a, this is from the National Institute of Occupational Health and, health and Safety, Safety and Health, sorry. And it's, and it's the largest study keeping track of 9-11 of first responders and survivors. So it's sort of, sort of similar to what we're trying to accomplish uh, through long-term biomonitoring surveillance through, through our toenail analysis. Um, so, so let me just quickly define some of the, the terms in this chart. And here, survivors are, are defined as those who are present on the day that the tax, the, the day of the attacks, or who worked or went to school in the, in the New York City disaster area on September 11th or the months that followed. And responders are all rescue personnel that actually responded to the disaster. And this chart represents uh, over 100,000 participants with about 82,000 responders and 31,000 survivors. And you can see here that you know, just over 20, uh, just over 20 years later, that tens of thousands of them have, have actually developed um, various respiratory issues and cancers. That, that means nearly 20% of the responders in this study have actually developed a form of cancer, and 45% have, de have developed pulmonary issues and disorders. So we're, we're really seeing that, although that this is, um, you know, a much bigger and more exaggerated disaster, we're, we're learning just how, um, just how detrimental to, to health that being a firefighter or a first responder can be and how important it is to learn about these conditions that we're, we're seeing them develop. Um, so, and one, one exposure that we're, we're particularly expecting and that we're studying with these toenails is, is to heavy metals. Um, and I'll start the slide off with a brief introduction on what heavy metals are, just so everyone can understand why we're so interested in them. And heavy metals are naturally, occur naturally occurring elements with relatively high densities, and they can actually be very toxic even at low levels of exposure. So examples of heavy metals include arsenic, cadmium, chromium, lead, and mercury, and even trace amounts of these metals are, are, typ are typically found throughout fire sites and the smoke, the debris, the dust, and even in the air. 
Uh, so we, we anticipate that firefighters receive exposure to heavy metals as a result of their occupation. And that really worries us because exposure to these heavy metals have been linked to a variety of chronic diseases and cancers, and many of them are known carcinogens. And we already know through previous research that firefighters are exposed to these heavy metals during fire suppression and other activities inherent to their occupation. And now we're, we're just seeking to further prove that and to actually quantify the amount of, of heavy metals that are, that are finding their way into their bodies and, and that they're exposed to at the fire site. So, okay, so now I'll go over um, what, we, what we actually do to quantify these heavy metals that I'm, that I'm talking about and how we prove that it's in, it, it, that they're making their way into these firefighters' bodies. And, and we do that through toenail analysis. Okay, so first off, um, we collect toenails from firefighters, and, and this is through various methods, and, and it's linked to individual studies, and all I really need you to, to understand is that we're starting with toenail collections from firefighters, and in order to, to analyze these toenail collections, we have a pretty lengthy process, but uh, I'll just briefly summarize it here. Um, first, we take the nails that are sent to us by our participants. We separate, weigh, and log them, and we place them into individual sample tubes, and we take them into our lab, we clean them in, in acetone, and then we melt them in nitric acid. And then finally, we take a small amount of that solution, um, and we analyze it through a process called inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, and that's also known as ICPMS. Um, and just to put that simply, um, this allows us to detect extremely small amounts of specific things that are present within our, our toenail samples, and it, and it allows us to know exactly how much of that thing is there. So we use ICPMS to, to look at what exactly what's in these toenails, and we can compare them to each other. We can compare them to healthy populations or, and, and sort of see um, if firefighters are exposed to abnormal levels of the elements that we're actually testing for. And so now I'll go over the ICPMS machine, which is uh, the machine that we actually use to perform the mass spectrometry that I just spoke about. And I'll give a couple examples of, of the metals that we're actually testing for and why, why exactly we're doing that. Um, so, our, so our ICPMS machine uses a type of mass spectrometry uh, that uses inductively coupled plasma uh, to ionize the sample, and it, it atomizes the sample and creates, creates atomic and, and small polyatomic ions, which are then detected and quantified. Uh, it's actually known for its ability to detect metals in liquid samples at extremely low concentrations, and it's in liquid samples, uh, if you're wondering why we melt our toenails in nitric acid beforehand, um, the ICPMS analyzes liquid samples. Um, and 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 this is why we chose to use this machine for our toenail analysis. And it's because we really need to be, see, be, be able to see anything and everything that's present within these nails. And, and that's so that we can accurately make predictions on what may be causing like this buildup to, to happen. Also, the ICPMS can accurately measure um, virtually every naturally occurring element. And this is perfect for us because um, the burn sites that firefighters are typically exposed to, they can have just about, you know, just about anything hiding within that smoke and debris. So we really want to, we really want to get a clear picture of everything that could possibly be within this smoke. We don't want to um, assume anything. Um, this is why. So yeah, this is why we actually analyze our toenail collections for um, an assortment of 29 individual metals, which I've listed here on my slide. Um, and by definition, this is what makes, sorry, um, by definition, what makes a, me an, a metal element is an element that forms positive ions and has metallic bonds. And metals with a density of greater than five grams per centimeter cubed are considered heavy metals. And these are uh, metals such as lead, cadmium, mercury, chromium and arsenic. And, and these metals have been classified as, as certain or probable or possible carcinogens, even at low levels of exposure. So if we find these elements uh, at high levels within the, the toner, our toenail collections that we're getting from firefighters, we know that um, further action is going to be needed. Um, and some of the metals that we test for, such as calcium, 
are, are necessary for natural biochemical and, and physiological functions within the body. However, um, even at, at concentration above normal levels, even these um, these these necessary biochemical elements can actually be toxic. That's why we also test for those. And long-term exposure to any of these elements can cause a concentration and buildup within the body, which can lead to detrimental health effects over time. And this is why we analyze um, our toenail collections over long periods. We, we, take, we take collections over a period of maybe you know, one year or more, and that's to provide um, biomonitoring surveillance, which I mentioned earlier. And this is that so that we can monitor if these elements are actually building up or, or if they're being properly processed and making their way out of the, the body. And yeah, um, that's it. Thank you very much. Does anyone have a question? Thanks, Alex. That's a great presentation. Um, I'm checking the chat to see if. <clears throat> I think Emre has a question. Oh, Alex, we can still see. Do you standardize the size sample of the toenail? Um, we 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 don't standard, standardize the sizes. We 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 standardize uh, through how we actually um, process the information. So we get the information out of the ICPMS um, through in parts per billion. And when when we break that down into the units of, of measurement that we actually want it, we we standardize by um, dividing that number by the 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 weight of each toenail. And then we have um, another question. Uh, so people are asking why toenails? Why specifically toenails and not hair or fingernails? Yeah, I, I sort of realized I, sh I probably should have included a slide about that. Um, we're, we're using toenails for a variety of reasons, um, most of which is it's just a really um, effective way of, of gathering um, like biological specimen from, from firefighters. Uh, as you can imagine, it's pretty invasive to to gather blood or, or urine. So it's it's just a really easy method to to take biological samples and monitor what's actually going on in their bodies. Um, an another reason is is toenails tend to store elements like like what we're testing for. They store them over the long term, so you can you can detect a metal that may have been present in these nails for you know. A long, very long periods of time, whereas with blood or, or urine, your body is really working as hard as it can to, to get these elements and these exposures out as quickly as possible. But a, a method that the body can't necessarily control as well as is, is, is through the nails. Great. Um, what levels of metals are you finding in the firefighters? Well, we're, we we've we've conducted previous studies where we found um, excessive levels of cadmium in in, in a in a, one of our cohorts, which is uh, basically a confirmed carcinogen as well. Um, right right now, as as far as as the study I'm working on, it's it's kind of in its uh, early phases. So we're finding levels of metals, um, but what we're what we're working on now is is sort of figuring out what exactly each level means. That's one of our, our bigger challenges is, is um, relating each individual metal and, and figuring out what, like what exactly X, like X amount of exposure means, if, if, I, if I'm explaining that correctly. So, so we're yeah, finding levels of each metal. Yeah, I think, I think you bring metal. up a really, sorry, oh, go sorry. ahead, Alex. Uh, so we're finding levels of each metal in, in their bodies and we can compare it to other firefighters, we can compare it to um, other studies. We can we can compare it to other studies that that quantified levels in healthier po healthy populations that weren't necessarily exposed to things that firefighters are. But what we're working on now is is trying to figure out what exactly each level means. Great, yeah, no, and I was going to just add, you know, I think you bring up a good point that this is 
fairly new work as far as collecting um, toenails for heavy metals. So there really isn't a lot of um, standardized data out there to compare it to. So we have started doing some healthy controls who are non-firefighters. So we have somewhere to compare it to. That's, I know, in the works. Um, and someone just asked, will this testing be open to outside first responder agencies? No, no, you probably be able to answer that question better than yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, right now we, we've stuck to, to Florida. Um, I think it is open. It's not currently open with our um, approved protocol. We we do have it open for our women's cohort, which is a national sample. So it you know there is the possibility of um, having other departments outside the state of Florida. So we are open to it. Um, if that answers your question. And then um, we also have a question: Have you run parallel? parallel analysis with the blood samples you have collected? We plan to do that. We have not yes. done that yet. <clears throat> we, we will be, and it's, we're very interested in, in what that's gonna look like. We're excited for that. Great. And then what ideas would you propose to evaluate the association of metal concentrations and toenails with their firefighter health outcomes? So, so that's a that's a really interesting question. Um, to evaluate the associations, we're really looking, or as far as what I'm looking at, is I'm, I'm trying to compare our our toenail concentrations to to what we would consider like a healthier population, maybe a population that um, through through other studies they confirmed that these are healthy individuals and that they haven't been exposed to to things like fires. Um, and comparing these these concentrations and then following um, these populations over time and seeing if, you know, maybe someone that that has exaggerated levels of arsenic in their toenails, does that actually lead to, to negative health outcomes over the long term? So that, that would be more of a long term study to, to sort of evaluate what exactly these associations are going to mean. But that's something I would be very interested in seeing. Great. Can you talk a little more about what you collect besides the toenails um, as far as health information, if you wanted to know uh, different health outcomes like um, health history, cancer history, do you guys collect a survey with the toenails? Yeah, we do. We, we, we um, initially administer a survey that, that asks for like how long they've been in the fire service, how old they are, um, just any all, all types of variables in relation to what they actually do as a firefighter and and then we we try to link each each of these variables to um, their exposure levels so one of our one of the past studies that I've worked on actually found a link between um, what exactly a firefighter did as their occupation at the fire scene um, and, and they linked that to excessive levels of of certain heavy metals in their body so they found that, um, firefighters that are performing multiple roles at the fire scene in, instead of just singular roles, such as being a driver or um, an interior firefighter or just uh, managing over everyone, um, they found that those guys were actually exposed to, to higher levels of, of certain heavy metals. Great. All right, I'll leave it open. Does anyone else have any other questions or comments? Um, Dr. Dar, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think um, Alex did really good um, job, you know, summarizing. So I just want to add uh, that uh, probably we may not be able to tell whether you had uh, metal in your Thanksgiving feast last week by ICPMS, but I think, uh, from the toenails of uh, individuals who are exposed to high level of metal environment, we can definitely say that and uh, you know very correctly quantify that with ICPMS. <clears throat> so I think we'll continue to work on that and um, you know see what we can find out. Great. Um... 
All right. So thank you all for joining us again. Uh, we will have our next uh, monthly seminar series. Uh, it will be hosted on December 21st. Uh, so a little bit different because of the holidays. So we're doing it on the 21st rather than the 28th. Um, we will have Dr. Justin Taylor presenting. He's going to be presenting on the clonal hematoposis, uh, emerging importance and evolving understanding in disease risk related to firefighters. So a uh, really important topic and some really new data that is coming out. So we're really excited for the December presentation. Um, as a reminder, as always, please remember that our symposium is scheduled for the last week of February, Thursday and Friday, uh, the 23rd and 24th uh, here in Miami, Florida. It'll actually be hosted at the Miami-Dade Fire Training Center on Friday and local 1403 uh, Union Hall uh, Fire Tower on Thursday. Registration is free. You can go online and register for the symposium. We also are creating a Dolphins Challenge Cancer Team. So that is the 5K or bike ride, uh, Firefighters vs. Cancer. You can also find that online or any of our social media. Um, free to all firefighters as long as you uh, email, it, uh, email us with your name and your department. We're able to cover all um, registration and uh, fundraising costs. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions about anything related to the research or the programs or any of the events that we're having, please always feel free to reach out to us, uh, myself, Dr. Juan Martinez, Dr. Aaron Kovitz, or Tara Greenberg, who is our head administrator, um, for any questions. So thank you all uh, again for being here. And thank you, Alex and Shanta, for presenting. Thank you. Have a great month, everyone. See you soon.